بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم Hello everyone and welcome to This is Football Welcome to another Premier League review show we have for you guys today Ladies and gentlemen, as you can see in the title um, Manchester United did unfortunately for all of us Because we're going to hear about it for the next three weeks Beat Arsenal by three goals to one The one time I want Arsenal to actually go ahead and get a good result they bottle it and they let me down, but it is what it is. That's a different topic for a different day. Um, so look, today we're going to be talking all things Premier League. Well, of course, we're going to talk about Man United and Arsenal. It's the big occasion, big game of the week. And then after that, we're going to uh, go ahead and, and speak about all the other things that have happened this week. We're going to be talking every single other piece of action that happened this week we're going to be talking about it we're going to be talking about manchester city drawing tottenham getting another victory once again antonio conte's tottenham army you get me as they like to call them getting uh, more and more wins um and uh, basically we're just going to be looking at all the results should brendan rogers get sacked we're going to get into that as well um we're going to be talking about the Brentford Leeds game, because I'm sure everyone has seen the Ivan Tony goal and everyone's talking about it. So, you know, we're going to be discussing that as well. So we're going to be talking all things Premier League today. So whether you're watching this right now or on the replay, please don't forget to slap the like button right now. Subscribe to the channel if you're yet to do so. Every single one of you guys right now, please like the video and subscribe. Oh, by the way, we're going to be talking about Chelsea robbing West Ham as well. So make sure you like the video. Make sure you subscribe to the channel if you're yet to do so. Um, so look, as you guys know, I could come up here and speak about this for an hour, but it's always good to get other opinions in the house. It's always good to get on a panel and speak um, about the Premier League instead of just hearing Hussam's opinion. Sometimes it's good to hear other people's opinions, you know? So that's that's what we're here to do. And today, Man United versus Arsenal, we had to get a Man United fan and we had to get an Arsenal fan because we have to speak about what happened today. And I made sure... I made sure yesterday, I DM'd them two times the same message. No hiding. You cannot hide. Regardless, win, draw or lose, your ass better get itself on the show right here. And they're both here. So no one's hidden. No one's pretending that his cat is sick. So we are in for a really good show. So people, smash up the like button, subscribe. Um, I'm going to introduce you now to our lovely panelists. First of all... Um, the enemy of my enemy is my friend, but even my friend let me down today. Um, I DM'd him yesterday. I said, listen, no hiding. And he's proven it. He doesn't hide. He's here. He's showing face. So joining us is none other than the man that I've spoke to on Spaces plenty of times. And he's a very, very, very strong opinionated Arsenal fan. He's been on this channel before and he's making a return to this football. Man like one touch has joined us. How are you doing, my brother? Oh yeah, now my people, my people, it's your dark skinned man from the motherland. If you didn't know before, today you will understand. And my internet's kind of moving like my team were today, moving mad, but bear with me. Smash the likes, everybody. Let's go. Big up, big up, big up to you, man. Big up to you. You're always welcome on the channel. And joining us again as well for the first time in a really long time, Iman United fan uh, who's extremely happy who's very happy to watch his team play some football for the first time in a really long time. Um, you guys have seen him over there at Never a Foul. You've seen him on this channel before, on the countless Man United shows that we've done together. Um, you've seen our interactions always. You know, this guy knows knows how to get to me. He knows how to rile me up sometimes. But thank God we ain't here to talk about me today. So, you know, I should be good today. Um, so joining us is none other than the man himself. Um, as I like to call him, and if you do not understand this reference, then your comedic sense is just you know, on the ground, to be honest with you. So joining us is none other than the man himself, man like A.A. Ron. How are you doing, my brother? Good evening, my brothers. I hope you're well. I'm feeling super, super happy, as you can probably tell. The smile is beaming. It's been a long time since I've been able to smile like this watching Manchester United, but it's it's brilliant to be here. And it's just been able to talk about what happened today a little bit longer. My girl, I come home, my girlfriend doesn't get it. So it's good I've got used to here that I can bounce off now and just spread more of that love because I know you're both so happy for me. I can see it in your eyes. I can, I can, I can feel the love beaming through the screen from both Ecstatic. of you today. 
ecstatic ecstatic um <laughs> anyway before we get into the football big up everyone in the comments section uh shout out my guy muhammad ammar big up to you thunder road i chose to leave that show for personal reasons that i shall not discuss big up my guy saint benjamin big up pablo gary paul is in the house mustafa is in the house gun ben is in the building omar roshji chelsea og mahadira is in the house captain sal is in the building as well Taha's in the house. Night Reader. Man Like Sama is here as well. Uh, Mustafa is in the house as well. Justin, MBA Business. Um, and big up to all of you guys for, for watching us. As I said, make sure you like the video. Make sure you subscribe. And we're about to get into it. So let's start off with the winner. You get me? Of today's clash. Unfortunately, may I add, the winner of today's clash. Um, man Like Aaron, what are your thoughts on, on what happened at Old Trafford? You no, know, I've, I've been like, for the first time in a long time, I've been looking forward to a United Arsenal game. Like this was, you know, growing up, this was the game. This was the Premier League staple game. The two biggest clubs fighting it out. We've both been a little bit weather beaten, you know, looking to get our way back, fighting yourselves and City. But this is the first time I've been looking forward to going to Old Trafford. You know, I've been the season ticket holder for several years. Really looking forward to it. Wanting to be one of them classic United Arsenal games. No love lost. Really both going for it. Two teams in form. It's not been like that for a while, and that's what it was today. And I'm, I've come away. It wasn't a classic game, but it was a great game of football. And I think, you know, both both sides shown where they are at the moment. And I think Arsenal really uh, hate hate to say it, just as much as I hate to say it about Liverpool, really are a great footballing team. I can't take anything away from them. Maybe on another day, you know, they didn't they didn't create too many clear cut chances, but they looked dangerous when they went forward. And you can see what Arteta is trying to do and. It was always going to be a difficult game for United. And we've shown that against Liverpool. I, you know, I'm not trying to rub salt into any, any wounds, but we did show against Liverpool that, you know, when, when our back's against the wall and we're not rated, um, we can stand up and we can fight against these great teams. And that's all we want as United fans at the moment. We just want to go to Old Trafford, support the team, get the performances back that our support is giving them. And that's what we're getting. And I think we were in the game. I don't think they, I don't think I've heard some Arsenal fans saying they battered us and they were all over us. I think we held our own. And yes, it was it's 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 a it's a system and a style of play built on defense at the moment, but we, we used it very well and, and with Ronaldo coming on changed the game for me. Uh I think Arsenal fell for it and it allowed us to to get those two goals. But I'm walking away from Old Trafford a very, 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 very happy man. Enjoy it, I'm enjoy so it. happy. Enjoy I, I I have to. I have to. Yeah, One man. touch. This is all your fault. Your thoughts <laughs> on today's game. Oh, uh, mate. It, it was a weird old game, man. To be honest, the first 10 minutes for me, it was United. United looked pretty good. I was like, quite surprised that they had a lot of the game. But I was also like, hmm, this is different. We're actually giving them the ball. This might be the tactic because we're away from home. There's no need for... United with the ball aren't, aren't usually known to do much. But then we took control of the game. We got a disallowed goal, and I'm not going to get into all of that. It was disallowed. It was a foul, like whatever, right? But if that counts, the momentum is different. But it doesn't count. So um, it was a bit of like a boxing match. Then United, after being under the cosh, they hit us with a sucker blow, like literally out of nowhere. It was against, against the runner play, like poor defending. Gabriel, don't let me get, get started about that player today. Like, oh my, I, I go kill that guy today. <laughs> but anyway, um, then, don't start. I mean, you know, we are asking you about Arsenal. Go for it. No, nah, but like to be, I, I've been seeing. I spotted it last season. I was saying it for me. Our best centre back last season was Ben White. Nobody wanted to hear it. They were like Gabriel this, Gabriel that. I was like, look, the boy has mem like mental breakdowns in the middle of games when he's bored. I don't understand. Like he just loses himself. And then like today again, he went missing again, and look what happened. But. Second half, we start on the on the on, on the front foot again. We get the goal. Hussam, we get the freaking goal. Look, <laughs> this is the time where I guess the inexperience of our coach comes into play here. This is the time where you just calm things down for 10, 15 minutes. One one is 60th minute for goodness sake. There's still half an hour. There's no rush to get the second goal. No rush at all. Take your time. And then if you need to press towards the end, press. But no. But no, he's hyped. You can see him on the sideline, gassed off, like get, rallying up the troops. And like, United just played. We played right into United's hands. They they played a really unnecessary high line, chasing the second goal. And they got punished. That was it. And then the, the madman, 
the madman loses himself. Arteta, look, I'm Arteta mm-hmm. in. I'm not going to start crucifying and saying I'm Arteta out now, but the madman just lost himself. I don't know the adrenaline going 2 1 down the crowd. I don't know what got into him. He fought three substitutions and completely discombobulate our team is the right thing to do. Only one goal down, you know. One goal down. At the end of the day, at that point, even a draw is still not a bad result. I'm beaten. Do you get what I'm saying? Yeah. But the guy, is, he's, he's so excited thinking about the third goal before we've got the second goal. I think that was the big mistake today. He wanted to win this game. He wanted to make a statement. He wanted to be like the team are six out of six. And it was very naive at that point. He brought those three on and, and immediately you lot took advantage of our high line again and punished us again. And look, I would say we were just naive today. I'm not going to have a breakdown and say, ah, oh, same old Arsenal, we've not progressed. Uh, this is going to be a, our downfall because look, I saw enough today to, 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 to show me that we can bounce back. Everton at home, I mean, I'm not scared of Frank in any way, shape or form, but look, we, we played United away and played Everton last season and we saw what happened there. I think it'll be a different result this time round. One, because the Emirates is becoming a bit of a fortress right now. And two, the team showed me enough today to know if we create chances like this against Everton, we should put some away. Like That's what I'd say. It's very interesting you're talking about Gabriel. First of all, for me, from Arsenal's perspective, look, all, all jokes aside, now, of course, I did want Arsenal to win. But the, the thing is, like, watching Arsenal today was so disappointing because in the final third, they were just so stupid, man. Yeah. And, and yeah. you know... Um, of course, One Touch TV is talking about Gabriel, but there's another guy that I was very disappointed in, and that's Odegaard. I thought Odegaard was just, he was just dreadful today. And and there's a reason that Arteta took him off, because today he didn't he didn't perform at the level expected. There were chances that he himself should have scored. I still remember in the first yeah. half, where he sort of got into a dangerous position, I just wanted to turn around and like sort of find the pass. Shoot. For no reason whatsoever, like De Gea is right in front of your face, just shoot. I know you can win a corner, whatever, but like, you know, at least try, you know, that's, yeah. that's what I thought. And, you know, it's just like in the final third, it was, it was missing that little bit extra spice. Like, I you know, you, you, the chicken is cooked perfectly, but there's no spices. So you're just eating yeah, it me. and you're like, this is dry as hell. You know, that's, that's I, sort I, of what happened uh, from Arsenal's perspective. And I think today as well, I don't think it's like same old Arsenal or panic stations or anything. Because if you would have told any Arsenal fan you're going to get 15 points out of 18 in the first six games, every single one of them would have taken it. And plus, they, they never really do well at Old Trafford. But for me, it's the way. Every person mm. and his dog knew United are going to go on the counter-attack. They're like, they're going to go. Everyone knew this. Everyone knew United are going to go on the counter-attack. And there's no disrespect to Aaron, but Arsenal are just in a better place. They're going to be confident. They'd want to keep possession. Even, I think, they asked Ten Hag about Zinchenko on midfield, and he said, like, you know, uh, we're going to be looking at that. We're going to be dealing with it. So, like, every everyone was ready for United's plan, except Arsenal. Extremely high line, very naive to play that way against uh, Man United, as I myself found out, even with much better defenders. You get me? Very naive to play that high line against uh, Man United with, with Rashford running in there. Because the one thing you have to say is today, Man United had something that they didn't even have against us, and that's Anthony and Rashford both mm-hmm. together. So they've mm-hmm. had they have pace wingers who can run in behind. If there is one thing that Rashford can do, it's run. He is going to run in behind and, yeah. and, and, and get into that space. So I think, you know, the, the Arsenal performance from a coaching staff's perspective, from the front line's perspective, defensively, I hear it, but I don't blame the defenders per se. I blame more the system. But when I look at the front line, that's for me the major disappointment. It's just like they got into dangerous positions so many times and yet did nothing with it. Like not yeah. absolutely nothing no. with it. And the way they uh, concede uh, the goal... Odegaard, man, for me, just, like he just doesn't like to pull the trigger enough. And there was a, the the chance in the second half for me. He's got a, he's got to at least hit the target, just for me to at least calm down. At least hit the target. How do you hit it wide from there? And that's a crucial time in the game where you've got to score. And that's why Arsenal fans were going crazy at me before the game in the preview. I said, you know what? I actually don't mind if Odegaard doesn't start this game because for me, away from home, he's not really the best. And I think we'd, we'd, we'd enjoy having a ball carrier like Smith Rowe in the 10 in a game like this. But everyone laughed at me. And look what happens. He, he, he's not in the game again. He misses crucial chances. Put Smith Rowe in those same exact chances. You can't tell me he's not taking them. Smith Rowe would shoot 100%. 100% he would. 
100 bro. You could tell as well. So, so Aaron, why are you saying from from Arsenal's perspective? By the way, just before uh, Aaron uh, goes on, 15 minutes into to, to, to the show, there's already 60 people in the house. Big up to you guys. Make sure you like the video. Make sure you subscribe to Smash This Is Football it. right now. Everyone, stop what you're doing right now. Hit that like button and subscribe. We want to get to 50 likes as quick as possible. We're just 19 likes away. So like the video and subscribe. Aaron, from Arsenal's perspective, <coughs> well, what, what are you saying just from Arsenal's perspective? I was really impressed with Arsenal. Like, I've not watched a lot of them this season um i know obviously like you say you know five and five coming into the into the game the leagues informed team and they didn't disappoint me they disappointed me in the finishing like you know they're saying about odegaard but i think that's a yeah. that's a chink in his armor he does that a lot i've heard a lot of arsenal fans talk about odegaard getting into positions and looking for that pass rather than taking the shot and i think that's something mm -hmm. that he needs coaching um in, in to start taking them because he, he could have scored one or two, especially in that first half. Uh, my seat's right directly in in, in line with the pen, penalty spot, and I saw I saw him. He was him and him Saka and Ben White were really played. I, I was really impressed with Ben White today. I think he was Arsenal's best best player for me. I'm, like I say, I, like you were saying, he's your best centre back as a right back. I think he's brilliant. I think he's absolutely he's non stop. You know, he can get up and down the pitch. He, he's athletic. He works well with Saka. Him and Saka were really connecting quite well. And I think, yeah, he really impressed me today. And I think... That, that, for me, that, that partnership you just talked about, that was the first time it looked kind of decent. I still oh, believe really? Saka does better with, um, with Tommy Asu. With Tommy Asu, yeah, yeah. Overall, Ben has done well this season. I mean, not like... Yeah. That. I think, you know, you, you can't fault him, especially being took out of position. Um, I know he's played yep. uh, right back before, but, you know, cement, hopefully he thought he, thought he would have cemented his place last season as a centre-back, but, you know, he's doing a job for the team and he's doing it really, really well. Um, like I say, on another day, you know, we, we don't bring Ronaldo on and we don't score them two breakaway goals. You know, it worked perfectly for us, that tactic. And, you know, you're, and, and I'm not I'm not ashamed to to say United are playing counter-attacking football because it's not the same counter-attacking football we was, we was playing under Oli. You know, it's it's built on a solid base. That that defence is is un unbelievable at the moment. I'd, I'd say the weak link, you know... Mm. I, no, I think I think they're playing really, really well. If, if you if you're watching them, the communication is there. You know, even even one touch. You need to remember he 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 had to watch Maguire for. I had to watch season. Maguire live off and show. So it's yeah. different for him. Like okay. Lissandro is like not, like Maldini now. So let's yeah, like. I'm not, yeah, I, yeah, I'm not yeah, saying, yeah. but I, what I'm what I'm trying to say is they're playing unbelievably well for for four players put together that don't know each other. You know, they're they're building a partnership. They're building a a, a unit. Um, even De Gea is improving in, in small steps. You know, Delo probably was the weak link there. I think Martinelli kind of had him on toast a lot. Um, yeah. he, he was really pushing him, and it, but he did well. I know. I think Malassia had his toughest game. You know, Salah couldn't do nothing against him. Um, yet, yeah, you know, Saka really, really pushed him. No, no, nah, hey, hey, hey. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> little cheeky, little cheeky but, there. But, but Saka, as you would expect, be, being the quality that he is, really did test him. And, and as a young man, Malassia is only going to get better, better with that. But I, like I say, Jesus impressed me. You know, he he really does look oh, good. Jesus um, was 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 trouble all game long. He, he was, you trouble. know, he was troubling Varane, and you know, Varane's a Royal Royce of a defender for me, and he was really troubling him. Because uh, I mean, you know, last last two or three games, he's, he's played quite well. But yeah, you know, he had a good game today. Like surprisingly, and I never thought I'd come on the show and say it. Like I know exactly. Scotty had a decent game today, you know. <laughs> Somebody, I, I didn't, I didn't think I'd ever say those words, but boy, one touch was questioning himself. Like before yeah. he I've, 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 I've openly said on on multiple channels, multiple shows. For me, he 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 has been the worst player I've ever seen for play, play for Manchester United. I'm not a fan of this kid <laughs> at all. Like. I've watched Jemba Jemba. I've watched wow. David Fillion. Wow. And I've said Scott that McTominay is, is the worst player. Worse than Luke Chadwick, I, yeah. Oh, Luke Chadwick did some bits, though. That, that, that's oh, unfair on Luke Chadwick, to be deep, fair. Deep, um, deep, it was just deep. his face that would let him down. I, but, <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> no offence, Luke, if you're watching. I love you. Um, <laughs> but Scott McTominay, the last two games, Leicester, he played really, really well. And today, I was so impressed with him. First half, particularly, I mean... He's wanting the ball. He's taking the ball. He's not doing his silly little bunny hop and turn. His, ch his tackling needs a bit of work. But it, it's clear in this last two games, three games, 
it's the result of being coached. He's not been coached for five years since he came into the, the first team. You know, Mourinho didn't do it. Oli didn't do it. And obviously, Randy didn't have enough time to do it. But Ten Hag is coaching him. And the, it's too early to say, but it looks like he's a bit of a player there. Very good squad player. And I'd be happy, you know, when he does lose his place to Casemiro eventually. But, you know, you can't... You can't and the good thing about Ten Hag is he's not, he's not dropping players um, that are playing well. And that's what we want. You know, they're allowing to to play... And he deserves to be in the team. And, you know, I, I I wouldn't have dropped him today. I think he should have played. Um, but no, yeah, I agree with you. Scott McTominay was was really, really impressed. You, you, you know what the thing is, just, just on the Man United perspective, I, I'm going to give Man United a lot of credit here. Um, look, I feel like people in 2022 specifically, and you guys would know this, like of course, me, me, you, and One Touch are a bit older than the newer generation. So we've watched a whole bunch of football. So it's a bit different <laughs> yeah. for us. But like, People nowadays are so obsessed with like playing nice football and good football and blah blah blah. Man yeah. United today had a game plan and they executed that game game plan to perfection and they won the game. Well, I'm sure well. right now if I got Arteta in the room and said, "Would you rather have reversed the result and the performance?" You'd have absolutely accepted that three points okay. is is yeah exactly three points is three points. So look, Man United, yes, they played on the counter attack, but that's because Arsenal. Logically speaking, from a footballing perspective, everyone knows they're better in possession. As of today, the Arsenal are better in possession than Man United. So you play to your strengths. You don't play to your opposition strengths. That's why today, Ten Hag had a plan. He executed that plan and he won the game. And, and that's what's required. Sometimes, sometimes, you guys, life just isn't just about good football full stop. Because I'm no. sure that Aaron... When they play Brighton, at, oh, they've played them already. <laughs> um, when they play uh, Bournemouth at home, Fulham at home, etc. Of course, he's going to expect to be dominant and dominate possession and be the better team. But Arsenal are pulling up. They won five out of five. You don't need to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with them. Let them have yeah. the ball. I'm going to defend and I'm going to attack you and I'm going to score on the counter attack. It's as simple as that. Um, just before we carry on to the conversation, I just want to say there's 80 people watching us right now. Thank you guys so much. As I said, please don't forget to slap the like button right now. Subscribe to This Is Football if you're ready to do so. We're literally five likes away from 50 likes. Everyone right now, please like, like, subscribe, subscribe. Nice Keep letting us your, uh, know your thoughts. Nice um, in the comment section down below, because there are a few hot takes. You get me. Captain <laughs> Sal here says, Smith throws better than Odegaard for me. Um, Night Reader, of um, course, is talking about the the him being a former Chelsea man. Chelsea Chelsea fans have the best, you know, uh, main character syndrome. Uh, DJ here is questioning <laughs> our thing. Massimo Taibi, now he was bad. bad. Now he was bad, but he was Mom, a yeah, he was pretty yeah, bad, yeah. man. He was but a Tommy did come more than Taibi did. Come on, yeah, but, but Tommy's been bad for five years, so he's got he's got longevity over him. Do you know yeah, what I mean? And and he was a keeper as well. <laughs> he was, he a, was keeper. a keeper. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. I feel like with keepers, it's a bit, it's a bit uh, um, uh, different. Uh, and there was one more uh, comment. Where was it? I wanted uh, this one right here. Thoughts on Anthony's performance? Aaron, take uh, it away. Talk, I've, got, talk about I've, it. I've got a new, I've got a new moniker for him. So this, this guy now is known as the fella from the favela. Listen, this kid is, <laughs> is oh, I love him. Like, listen, I, um, my my national team is Brazil. You know, I, I, I cheer all Brazilians that come to the Premier League, no matter. What team they play, play for? I've I've always been that way, you know. I was happy Jesus left City, and went to Arsenal because I knew he would vent, he would become the man. Arteta would put his arm on his shoulder and would make him his number nine. So whenever a Brazilian comes to the league, not just for my team, I'm excited to see him play. And I, I, listen, I, you know, it, it, it's a bit unfair. What he's he's come with a bit of a name as a show pony, and it reminds me a lot of Ronaldo because you know you see the three sixty, the tricks, and that on, on Instagram, YouTube, whatever. So, you know, people thinking he didn't have too much to his game other than being sort of, you know, Jogo Benito and stuff like that. And I think he's shown today, he's got a bit of that dog in him as well. You know, there was a few times he was sliding in. Putting Even his, his celebration. Even his celebration, his celebration. Yeah, literally. He's got, he's got personality. He's got something about him. And he's not enough of them personalities in football for me anymore. And hopefully this kid... You know, it's a big, it's a big, it's a big price tag. You'll know with, with your striker, eighty million pound. Um, it's a big price tag. Sixty-four million pound. Why are you adding the add-ons already? Why are you adding the add-ons? Hey, because it happens to Manchester United, so I'm going to do it to everyone else. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, I think, and I, it says a lot that when he came off and Rashford stayed on, I think you know there was some grumbles near me. People were happy that he went off, and I understand he went off. He's not played uh, for a little bit. And you know it turned out to be a, a great decision as Rashford, Rashford scored two two goals, 
But yeah, I mean, it's it's nice to have a wide player with a left foot because we've not had that for a long time. You know, it gives Sancho that, that chance on, on the right. Who else? Who? Uh, who, who? San, San, hey, hey, Sancho had a good game today. I, I won't hear it. He had a what? He had a good game. No, he no, didn't. Oh, Come on, Aaron. Listen, listen, uh, bro, listen. Bro, I didn't know he was playing. No, 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 no. I didn't know he was playing for the minutes. He didn't call that. Listen, he wasn't going to... I can give you everything else, but this sat... All right, all right. Let me let me play. Let me say it different then. Maybe he didn't... Maybe he played well. He played smart and he played in the system. Brother. And, and he, 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 I won't say he had a bad game. I won't say he had a bad game. And he was missing he did, for but, the whole game. Nah, I didn't nah, even know he was nah, playing nah, after nah. a while. I was like, what? Swear down Jaden's there. I think because he went. He went I can't lie, Aaron. This one, this one, I ain't going to back you. I can't say that. I can't say that. Not Sancho, not Sancho. Today he didn't have anyone else, bro. You can say any man in the team, but Jaden, he was missing, bro. He's still in Dortmund, as far as I know, bro. I I think he was the other one. He's had a good start to the season. He's had a good start right, to the season. Not, he's not. He's not. He's it's scored, scored a couple of goals. Two, he's a couple he's goals. Easy, listen, easy. listen. Let me let, let me tell you. In in this system, eventually. So we talk about the counter attacking, and obviously, United United are three years behind Arsenal, and I think United are not. We're not following the same path, but you know, you you won an FA Cup playing playing solid in defence and scraping that through to get that FA Cup, and I think that's what United are doing with Ten Hag at the moment. Eventually, yes, we will be looking to have seventy percent possession. So many shots on target, whatever, whatever. But I think he will get the best out of Sancho. Sancho is perfect for for Ten Hag system, and eventually it all clicks. He, he'll ball out on the regular. Let me tell you. And I wasn't. I can't. I can't. I can't slag off any player tonight. I think they all played well. I think they did what they had to do, and Wait, I'm happy. I'm happy Aaron. that they won three one. I can't. Aaron, I, I ain't hearing Aaron, any Santos. Aaron, 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 look, look, I'm not mad at you for being happy about the victory. <laughs> like, I'm not mad at you because I'll be doing the same at uh, Housery too. I'm with I, I can't, you. I can't oh, hear Sancho. I'm with it, I'm with it. but Sancho, Jaden nah, Sancho was, has not good. arrived in Manchester yet. Let's not. Nah, he was, he was good. He's man. been off. He's Aaron, been he right didn't have a good game today, bro. Literally, the other 10 players were better. Okay. It might look different you know, in, in the stadium. He looks okay. That's all I'm going to say. An another thing about Anthony, yeah. Look, big up Anthony. He came in. I think this is such a cop out, man. Such a cop out. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. In the what was he just saying? He might not look good at you, but he looked great in the stadium. That's such a cop out. That's leave such him. a cop out. Leave him. Leave him. Leave him. Leave him. Leave him. He knows what he's doing, bro. He knows what he's doing. Jaden's not arrived from Dortmund yet. Let's not. Like, I know uh, he's got a massive ceiling. Don't, I'm not. I'm not debating that, but he's not arrived at Manchester. I know he scored a couple goals this season. Saka Sack, scored a couple goals and had a, a couple assists, and he's been awful this season too. Like, let's be honest, his, this was his best game today of the season. So I hope he pushes on. But in terms of Anthony, big him up. First bit of football this season, he scores a goal on his debut. Like the lights, everyone's excited. But let's let's be honest, he did not have that big of a game today, man. And I can see his first season being like. What's his name? Memphis Depay. I think oh, he's no. going to be a player. I think he's going to be a player eventually. But this season, Man United fans, calm down. I'm te don't give him too much expectations this year. Just like Ronaldo's first season, as you said, we did. He was a lot of tricks. I think that's going to be Anthony. He's going to have a couple of moments of brilliance here and there, but there's not going to be any sustainable form for him this season just yet. I think you'll see the better of him in the next two, three years, but just, just just give him some time. There's definitely a player in him, though, for sure. I mean, he's, he's definitely really he's definitely trusted because he's, he's been thrown in. You know, I, I don't rate Alanga, and I think Alanga is overrated. And I, he's, it's a case of a young player having to play Real talk, Real talk. Ra Sorry. rather than playing because he's been brilliant. But An Anthony's different. He, he's got that mentality, and I think he is a he is a he is a good player, a really good player. And he, he could become a great player. This was the moment playing. for me, whether where you were in the stadium or on TV. This moment right here where Anthony <laughs> backheeled us between two players. This like this was this was like this was like the moment where he's like, yes, I'm here. And, and this is the thing. I always love it when I see someone make their debut, regardless of where they're from or what league they come from. I don't give a shit if they mess up all game, as long as you're taking risks. Like as long as he doesn't give a shit, he's gonna do what he wants to do on the football pitch. That shows me that the confidence is there. And and, sure. and look, Anthony, regardless of whether he scored the goal or not, overall. His game was a very good game. He had a great game overall, regardless of the goal. Like he was always threatening. He was, he was, you know, he 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 was he kept going at um, Zinchenko. It dribbled past him a couple of times. You know, was looking dangerous all game long. So for me personally, I think, um, look, 
when it comes to Anthony, impressive debut. But as, as you guys know, in the Premier League, it's all about consistency. It's all about yeah. keeping this form up. And the, the, the interesting thing for me about Man United is as follows. And this, by the way, applies to Arsenal as well. But Man United have a bit more depth. When the Europa League starts, I don't think anyone's ever going to be complaining about the game time. People need to clock from now till the World Cup. Not, like the big six teams are literally going to be playing twice a week, every single week. So... Yeah, so. People, no, no one's going to complain about lack of game time for either club, for my club as well. No one's going to sit up here and say, oh, we're not getting enough games, etc., etc., etc. Everyone's going to get games because the games are so congested. I've always made this a point to the people, you know, when I was talking about my club and how we need transfers and how this season is different. I always said, look, in a period of two, three months, you're literally going to play every single week twice for yeah. two, three months in a row. So now, even an Anthony, by the way, if, if you want to settle in, etc., you can give him the Europa League games. You can give him the Carabao Cup game. Carabao you can Cup, give him yeah. the, the game at home. You can even give him a half and give someone else a half. There's so many different factors. There's so many different ways you could use them. And, of course, as well, um, you know, Man United and Arsenal both, uh, and this is, you know, me giving credit, both of them have fantastic academies. So, you know, there's a couple of youngsters as well that, that looked really well in preseason. Um, that they're going to play them. You know, we've all seen them, the likes of Zidane Iqbal, the likes of Charlie Savage, you know, the likes of Garnacho. So, um, Arsenal as well, one of the best academies, if not the best academy in, in England as well. Um, didn't really watch their preseason though, so I don't know the names of their youngsters. But anyway, uh, you know, they, they do have a couple of good youngsters. I know yeah, that for yeah, a fact because yeah. we've seen them play and see them come through. So, look, it's it's in terms of gameplay, I don't think Anthony or anyone who signed for either club is going to complain about game time because there is going to be so much game time for everyone to participate. Real I don't think it's going to yeah, uh, 100%. I think some players might complain the playing a bit, uh, playing a bit too much. You don't know there's that many games coming, but uh, United, 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 have, United have a lot of dead wood still, so we've still got a lot of players to try and get give some minutes to. But I, I don't think Anthony will play. He might play. He might play this Thursday in Europa League, but I think he'll be Premier League starting. I think he's he's trusted. He saw it with uh, Malasia, home debut against Liverpool. He's not he's not afraid to throw players in and see if it's. Fight or flight, and they both. How many well. times are you going to mention that game? Tell me how many. Because this is like the seventh time already. <laughs> I mean, it's just relatable. That's all I'm saying. It's just a relatable point. I, I promise you. Uh, so, so what are your wing options now with Man United? Just to sort of just look so at hopefully, the hopefully Martial can can sort himself out and be and be fit. But obviously, he'll be a striker. Which therefore, I mean, you know, I understand why he's playing Rashford through the middle at the moment. But I would like Rashford on the left. He, you know, he scored. Both the goals today from the left. He scored the goal against you from the left. Um, we've got obviously Anthony. No, I'm just. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> I'm just saying. Aaron, you're taking a piss. You're taking a piss. He's man. doing this on purpose now. He's no, actually I'm doing really this on not. purpose. Honestly, I'm really not. The first time I let it go. The, the seventh time I ain't gonna let it go. Uh, Aaron, don't make me bring no, up the no, five nil no, thingy. I, I, you don't, swear, don't, I, I didn't mention it. Aaron, it's the last time. Bad, it's the last bad. time I mentioned the Liverpool game. Again, it was just a relatable point. Um. So we've got obviously a Langer, and then you've got obviously Ganacho if he gets any game time. The Langer uh, playing so, the Liverpool game, yeah. Sorry, sorry, sorry. sorry. He did. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I'm not saying. Um, yeah, but I think it, I, yeah, we've got we've got some options now. And uh, but so so who are your options? Martial, Rashford. Mar and I, would say, I would say, well, I I think Martial is okay from the left, but I think he will be striker with Ronaldo coming from the bench. Um, we got Rashford. Alanga, Sancho, Anthony, and then Ganacho if he gets any minutes at all. And I think okay, so you basically we, have four wingers. But I think but we have seen in in games he's putting Bruno out on the right as well. Uh, halfway through, I think he did it in the second half. So Bruno potentially could play either side as well on the wing. I will just say it. Oh, I would. I love would, to see that, I would advise. I would love to see that. Please I would do, advise please. heavily please. against that. Please, 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 please. bro. We did please. it today against you and scored two goals. So nah, I don't know. Bro, I don't please, know. Please, do you want to see it again, bro? Please continue. Because, like, let's be honest, right? United, their game plan was spot on today, man. They took advantage of our, our naivety, especially at one-one for, for sure. Yeah. Um, but. You, you're not going to keep getting away with playing like this guy, bro. Like, but, trust me. This, trust oh, me, you're not. Like, it's good what you're doing right now, but you're not going to keep getting away with this. No, I, I, and there's going to be bumps in there's going to be bumps in the road, 100%. But what, what United fans, and I think, you know, a lot of us are accepting of is that it's a process and that I've got patience and no one expected us to lose the first two games. I, if, of the six games we've played, I would have expected to lose against 
Liverpool and uh, yourselves, given the form that you're in. But, you know, we've won the last four after what was a terrible start. So I have to be happy and we can see there's something there. And, and I think we just have to be patient um, and... And, and and just take 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 the rough with a smooth, you know it's all it's all happy at the moment and it's it's good to be up, um, gaining points and, and four wins in a row and, and not conceding two goals in in four games is it, really good. But I, I I get that there will be teams and and people may figure this tactic out and and this formation out, but it's not always going to be that way. Three four months Aaron, time we're going to be a lot better. Aaron, you're you're so good at what you do, yeah. You just threw in the game one last time, and I don't even think Hussam caught it. Like one last I time, did, and I, was, I, did, I nearly I missed it as well. Pretend that I didn't. What yeah. a guy, Aaron! What a guy! <laughs> He's done it again. He's done it again. Um, so one touch just before we move on from this game. Is there anything yeah. else you want to yeah. say, or just from Arsenal's side? Or um, look, it, it, we couldn't have a better fixture next to try and uh, bounce back. But today was naivety. Well done, Ten Hag. But no need to panic. Let's move. We're still top of the league somehow, some way. Week six, if you told me that, I would have laughed at you. And look where we are. So let's take it Fair game enough. by game. Fair enough. Um, so big up, by the way, everyone for, for joining us. Everyone watching us right now. 80 people are watching us right now. So please make sure you slap the like button. Make sure you subscribe to this. Fo- this is football if you're yet to do so. Everyone right now, please uh, watching us. Make sure you like the video and subscribe. Um, and big up to everyone in the comments section for getting us to 50 likes. Keep liking, keep subscribing, keep getting us your opinions in the comment section. And speaking of panic, you know who's panicking right now? West Ham are panicking. Because they're in last place. And they got robbed. They got absolutely robbed by Chelsea. Okay. And actually, not by Chelsea, to be fair to Chelsea. By yeah, the VAR yeah. officials. And, and I keep saying this. If the referees are bad without technology, imagine giving them technology when they can't even do their own job properly. Bro. My problem is not with VAR. My problem is not even with how VAR is implemented. My problem is with the clowns running it. Because anyone that's played football at a semi even at a shit level, if you've just played football at school, you know for a fact that ain't no foul. Everyone who watched that who was not a Chelsea fan looked at that and said that is not a foul. So what what are you guys saying on, on the Chelsea West Ham thing? Because I think West Ham, by the way, Moyes went on a tangent. Declan Rice went on a tangent. The, 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 the West Ham oh, fans on social media are losing their minds. Just like your opinions on, on that game specifically. Four, one, nine. That's what we call it here. Scam. That's a scam. Look, VAR is looking like a scam right now. Like, you're telling me that, like, I don't understand. Literally, first of all, what's this? If it's uh, if it's an obvious error, that's when we check it. They were, like, does that exist or does it not exist? Sometimes they say it is. Sometimes they say it isn't. Like, cause, but for example, today was an obvious error in Argo that was disallowed if they're saying that. Um, I'm just saying, like, let's, there's no consistency with anything done on VAR. So everyone questions everything. Do you get what I'm saying? Like, everything yeah. is questionable. Like, there's yeah. a challenge that was given for a penalty, and then the same challenge two games later is not given for a penalty. Like, what's going on? Do you get what I'm saying? This is supposed to be better for the game. Like, I thought VAR took took away, you know, the Monday morning debates where, like, oh, that was offside or that was a penalty. I thought, yeah. because I, I love that. And you, you, us guys, we grew up with football with that way. But VAR was supposed to help take those just, just onside goals. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, for sure, those things just on the, like, do you know what I'm saying? Those little bits, but it seems to be doing more damage than good right now. Yeah, it's, it's making people. Yeah, it's like people, are, and also it gives people heart attacks too because you celebrate like mad, and then VAR just was on a mad thing. Like, well, it, it happened today when obviously we was waiting for the to decision on your goal, and it was like bravo. everyone was celebrating, but everyone was celebrating. I was like, wait, hold on, he's not said because when he went to the screen, I was like, he's not, he's not, not giving it. Bravo. Like, just hold on, and it's one, it's one of them moments, and I think with with the with the West Ham one, obviously, I was speaking to a Chelsea fan yesterday on never a foul and. It's one of them questions is if that was against you, you're fuming. You are yeah. absolutely fuming. If it's for you, absolutely brilliant. It's the Chelsea fan. But you say, no, if it was against us, I, I, I'd still say it was a foul. That's abs- that's a lie. That's that's an absolute lie. There's no way you think that is a foul if it's a, Never. if it's against your team. Never. Like and it You take it, it obviously. You, of course, yeah. If it's for your team, all day long I'm celebrating and, until the cows come home. But if it's against you and it's you know five manage five manage margins, sorry for West Ham at the moment because 
you know, Hassani said, you know, they both, uh, Moyes and Rice both went on tangents because that's a sign of desperation. That's a sign of, of you know, less stress. They're, they're worried because West Ham were expected to be up there again. You know, they've signed a great, a, a potentially great player in Schmacker. Um, you know, really wanted to be fighting up with the big boys again. And, and it's not gone to plan. Lucas Paqueta as well from Leon. Yeah. As well. And yeah. again, yeah. another, you know, really surprising signing because I think, was he linked to Arsenal at one point in, in the summer? Yeah, I think yeah, 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 he was, he was. You know, and, and it's again, it's the, the, the power of the Premier League that these clubs outside the top six are getting these these great potential and, and great players. So, West, West Ham needs to be worried. And I think that, that's where that reaction comes from. But it's it's warranted in this on this occasion because it, it was not a foul and it should have been a goal. And, you know, at the end of the season, if, if West Ham go down or or whatever, it, it could be because of that, that point. And that's yeah. the, the sad thing about football that we find ourselves sometimes. But guys, let like let's the elephant in the room. Let's talk about Chelsea, man. Chelsea are looking shaky, shaky. bro. Like, shaky. like even with if if what's his name? If Corne scores like that header, worse than us. I'm not bro, gonna get a cut. Big facts. If Corne scores that <laughs> yeah. header, yeah. then we're not even talking about that situation. And they got very cool. lucky then. And like, how are you starting your strike partnership as Sterling and Pulisic, bro? These guys are telling me he's the fourth best manager in the world, and he's doing that as a, as a starting strike force at the bridge. Is he okay? I like, don't. Why think give Brozier? Why give Brozier a five year contract to put him on the bench when he's the like when statistically Sterling plays better with a nine? Like like you're like, you're making it unnecessarily hard for yourself, Thomas. You yeah. know what I'm saying? I, I don't think I don't think he sees the end of the season. To be honest with you, I don't think. Yeah. I don't think I don't think they win anything. I think the the pressure the pressure will be just. It'd be too much for him. And, you know, I'm going to say it. I think Kula Bali is going to be a write-off in this league. I don't think he's going to do well at all. He looks shaky to me, you know. Wow. It's all right to go in a volley against Spurs, but then, you know, getting sent off against Leeds and or whatever, I think I think that could be could be a shaky one. Fafana's a good signing. You know, Thiago Silva, a year older, doesn't look like, you know, he could be... Got, and I think they've, they've made a mistake letting... Like, maybe not letting Lukaku go, but not... Leaving it till the very last moment to get a Bamiyang, you know, and it's where did it go? If I don't know, I I, I worry for. And, and you know what's the, the interesting thing you just mentioned to Bamiyang? I yeah. don't even think Bamiyang solves that problem. No, I don't. Bamiyang, remember where you heard it first? A Bamiyang scores max nine Premier League goals this season, maximum. Bro, the thing is, yes, Bamiyang is a goal scorer, but. You're getting Aubameyang into an already not fluid situation yeah. with a clear problem in chance creation because Chelsea create chances, but Chelsea don't create high quality chances. Yeah. Because if I pass the ball to one touch and he's in the box surrounded by four players, that's also a chance created. And if I pass it to Aaron and he's through on goal, that's also a chance created. But <laughs> they both ain't the same chance created. No. So when it comes to Chelsea, I feel like they, they create a whole lot of chances, but... They don't create high quality opportunities. And now you're going to bring in a player. Look, I'm from the Middle East. Everyone here is a Barcelona or Real Madrid fan. So ever, a lot of my friends, they support Barcelona. They could not wait to get rid of Aubameyang. They yeah. couldn't wait to get rid of him. They said, yes, he came in, scored right a couple of goals. Then he started missing sitters again. Then his where link up that, where, where, have we, where have we had that before? Arsenal couldn't, get, couldn't wait to get uh, 100%. Him. You know, you know started really? missing sitters again, and then he didn't sort of the, the fluidity of the team, the link up play was much better when he wasn't there. So you're basically buying a skinnier, taller, faster Lukaku. Back he's, got again, worse, he's got a worse hairline now as well. You know? And he's got a worse hairline, to be fair. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's just like, I, I kind of. I, I genuinely do not understand what's happening at Chelsea. And, and you know, it's the messed up part, speaking I'm of sure. transfers, because this is going to relate to, I agree completely with Aaron, I don't think Tuchel is going to see out this season. I really do believe Tuchel is going to get sacked. And furthermore, I don't think me, and I, I and I haven't even asked them, but I know I speak for them because it's logic. Me, Aaron, and one touch, not one of us has watched Chelsea at any point in time and said, ooh, you know what's going to solve this? A £90 million centre-back. No, no one, no one's thought that. No, no one's no. looked at Chelsea no, and was like, never. oh, you never. know what they need? They need Fofana no. for 90 million to solve the problem. Like, Not look, one person has ever said that. Like, nobody, you know? bro. But you, you see the Chelsea thing, yeah? Like, for me, Tuchel has let howlers happen. I don't, I don't, correct me if I'm wrong about the first one. Was was Tuchel there when Gehi was still at Chelsea? Uh, he, yes. He, yes. So he allowed that move, number one. Okay, yeah. cool. He also didn't even watch 
uh, Tomori in AC Milan, apparently. That's what Vicayo said. And he's went and gone and won a, uh, a Scudetto last season, looking, looking like the real deal. So they had two defenders there, which they could have saved money to maybe put into some other positions. But yeah, yep. they went and spent Koulibaly money. Who knows about Koulibaly? I'm giving him 10, 10 games to really evaluate him because I, I think he's a good defender, but let's give him some time. Senegal won, AFCON, all that stuff. You get me? Let's see. Um, and also for Fana, good player, but he's definitely not worth that money. Leicester took them to the cleaners because of desperation. But like, when are we going to start calling out Tommy? Like, Tommy, because like, it's, maybe the, the whole Champions League team became a curse for him because he started turning up in conversation. How long are we going to play that bro, card for? Bro, he's, How he's long are we going to play in, that card bro, for? How long? He's been turning up in them conversations that none of us could have ever heard. Like, they're talking about the closest thing to Klopp and Pep is to... I'm like, what? Like, are you not all oh, right? Really? Because, oh, like, really? Di Matteo did win the Champions League. That doesn't make him elite. Let's get it right. Do you get what I'm saying? So In that in that, in that case, sure. Roberto Martinez is, is elite then, isn't it? You know what I mean? Like, it don't mean anything. No, he won the Champions no, League no. with him as well. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, it, it, it's no. jump the gun. The reason he got run out of Paris, you know what I'm saying? Where, you know, you win the league Bro, every year pretty much. Like, on, talk to me, man. Too I don't, sure. I don't, I don't, I don't think he's all that. I because think there's for the me, fear amongst the Chelsea fan base to sort of talk about Thomas Tuchel, because I, I feel like the conversations they're having about him now are the same conversations that they're having about him last summer. They keep mentioning the fact that he won the Champions League, even though that was two seasons ago. And the other thing is, Todd Bowley and everyone at Chelsea has made it clear that this summer specifically, everyone that they get in is going to be approved by Tommy Tuchel. Like it's going to be Tuchel signing. Yeah. And look, whether people like this or not. And, how, and, and regardless of how much you love Todd Bowley and how much he saved your club and stuff, listen, bro, Thomas Tuchel is not Todd Bowley's appointment. So, yes, he's given him full trust. Yes, he's given him all that stuff, but he's not his appointment. So, if he messes up, Todd Bowley's come in. He spent all that money. If by November time, just before they go to the World Cup, he looks at the league table and Chelsea are eighth or something like that, seventh, I don't think any ownership is going to be accepting of that, regardless of what the situation is. Because in his mind, he's like, I got you Koulibaly. I got you Fofana. I got you Aubameyang. I got you Sterling. I got you Kukurela for 70 million, which every single person he, he thought is absolute madness. You, we Great. spent you all that money. And you can't do what you're supposed to do. So I think Chelsea, I agree with Aaron. I think Tuchel is going to get sacked this season. I, I generally, I just like, the, the reading's on the wall for me. I, I generally don't expect him to to, to, to survive this whole season. I think either mid-season or after the World Cup, they're going to sign him, nah. sack him, in my opinion. Um, and Chelsea I think... They're a startup company, bro. They're a startup company. <laughs> and the startup <laughs> company did a few little flashy things, got a couple of nice toys to, to create a smoke screen for everyone. Like, But that we can see what's really going on. These little toys that you've thrown in doesn't cover what Tuchel's about. And that's nothing right now. He's getting all his tactics wrong. Yeah. I agree with that completely. And look, after the World Cup, there was always managers available. So, you know, he, he might be, uh, Todd Bowley might be dipping into that market right there. Um, now, moving on to the other London club, you get me, um, that we have to talk about. Just before we do that, I just want to say there's 92 people watching us right now. Please don't forget to slap up that like button right now. Subscribe to This Is Football if you're yet to do so. Everyone right now, please like the video. Subscribe to This Is Football if you're yet to do so stop doing that now hit the like button and subscribe it's free so make sure you like subscribe um so moving on tottenham hotspur again with another win uh slowly creeping up the table oh. now because you see <laughs> people people are talking about city people are talking about united people are talking about arsenal and then you look at the league table and you see tottenham over there with just as many points as city and only one point less than then arsenal slowly creeping up the table and once again, another win against a very difficult team, as I have seen, against a very difficult, as One Touch has seen, a very difficult team in, 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 in Fulham. Um, and they're doing really well so far. Now, for me, of course, I did laugh at Richardson, not like taking off your shirt and celebrating. <laughs> and then the guy, he just, he, got, he kept the yellow card anyway. You love get it. me. He, love it. He kept the yellow card anyway. You get me. But like, um, Spurs are, are moving really 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 oh my god if this happens oh my god if this happens i swear <laughs> to god i pray i pray i pray <laughs> anyway back to spurs 
Um, yes, please. I think Spurs are slowly moving up the ladder, and I think I'm gonna go out on a limb here. I think Tottenham Hotspur are guaranteed a spot in the season stock four. I don't, I'm not gonna budge on that. What are you guys saying on 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 Spurs? Let's start with one touch because he's always gonna be. I knew, I knew, I knew. <laughs> um, do you know what? Do you know what? At the start of the season, my prediction was Spurs have finished fifth. I wasn't getting lost in the hype and all these new signings. They're still Spurs. Conte is there, but they're still Spurs. But as the season is panning out and how bad Chelsea are looking, like, boy, and I can't see how they're going to stop it. Even though they, they, they luckily got that win against Leicester. Don't get it twisted. Even though they had 10 men, they luckily got that win against Leicester. They got beat by Southampton. They escaped West Ham just about. Do you get what I'm saying? So they still look very, very shaky. So I think, I think you might be right about that. I don't want to admit it, but there's no Spurs fans on the panel, so it's okay. For me. It's a safe environment. For there's Spurs admit. fans yeah. in the comment yeah. section. You get me? There's Spurs fans in the comment section. Um, uh, but yeah, probably. Prob- well, just as much as uh, as we're certain for top four Spurs are. Let's just say that. I don't think Arsenal will get top four. But anyway, Aaron, what are you saying? Uh, what about Arsenal getting top four? No, I don't think. No, no, it's fine. It's fine. That's a different topic. That's a different topic. <laughs> no, um, yeah, I wow. think. Nah, nah, nah. Wow. I, I think it's going to be down to the wire. I think these these two or three teams, us, I think we'll be in there. Um, Arsenal and 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 Tottenham as well. But no, talking about Tottenham, I think that Conte factor. You know, a full season with with him. He's, you know, he's a brilliant, brilliant manager. You talk about, you know, putting two chill up there with 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 Klopp and Pep. And I think I think Conte is definitely in that class just below uh, those two two managers, and he's going to get a lot out of this team. I think Conte, Harry Kane needs to ride Conte's. Uh, wow, pause. Whatever. What is no? <laughs> I think. <laughs> And says need to ride contagion. <laughs> he basically just needs to hold on. He needs to hold on to him as tight as possible because he's probably wow, the wow, only pause, way. Pause. He's the only way he's gonna win a trophy. That's that's what I'm trying to say. He's coattail. That's what I was trying to say. He needs to ride. Okay, okay, we got that. Um, because listen, he's got that team playing well. They look good in defense. They look good in midfield. You know, they've spent uh, money on on a midfielder that most of the league wanted. Um, Aaron, do you, do you hate me? Just tell me you hate me. Just no, say, no, just no, say, no, no, no just no, say, no, Nigel, no. I hate you, bro. Because no, look, I could never tell him, you just, you just said, I could never say, you that, just said, first of all, you said Sancho had a good game today, which is absolutely, he did fun. have a good game. The second thing you said was Spurs play good football. Nah, they don't. They're getting the job done, bro. And just like I said with United, they can't okay. keep playing this bad football and getting away with it. There's but nothing in Spurs' game that scares me. Listen, but they're listen, getting results. They can not, always get not, that, though. Like Hassan said earlier, not all good football is beautiful on the eye. Bro, so but they can't football. keep getting away with this football, bro. Come well, on, you've seen that, it, bro. That may, that may be the case. But at the moment, they're, they're doing what needs to be done. And and like For I said, sure. like, the midfield looks good. Like, Basuma cannot get in that midfield. He's struggling, you know. Um I, I, I think he eventually is a starter, though. He has to wait yeah, too much I, I, Yeah, but I'm saying at the moment, he, he's struggling to get in there. A lot like, you know, um, Casemiro over McTominay. No one ever thought that would happen. Fabinho so, when he first came in as well. Fabinho as well. Um, one thing I have to say, Spurs fans, I've got no ill will towards you. You know, you're not really a team I've ever had to deal with in terms of challenging for anything. But can we all please stop calling Richarlison R9? This is absolute blasphemy. Oh, my gosh. On one of the <laughs> best call players that. that has Are ever people played calling the him game. That? No, they're not. They're not. They're not. They're not, they're not. I know they think you talking, Montage, after, when they call Jay's R9. Game, Don't even after, try. Don't after, even after, try. I, I, I wasn't part of that. I wasn't part of that game. <laughs> after this show, after this show, go to Never a Foul. Look at the show I did last night. George that was on there was calling him R9. I can't have this blasphemy anymore. Wow. Please stop. And, wow. and fair enough, they're being shameless. And you know it's been a long time since they've done anything, and and I can understand they are getting a bit excited. Um, but I, I think I think I think they can win a cup this year. I think they can. They're not going to win the Champions League. They won't win the league, but they could win a cup. And I think that's what they need to push and look to do. And like like United, like like you said, they're getting the job done. It may not be fully attractive on the eye, but again, he's working with some new parts. He's still. I think he's still trying to get his. Philosophy over that. Look at what he did with Chelsea. You know what I mean. He, he won the league with them when he came in. So he is a great manager, and I think he, he he could get a tune out of these players. Kane still being Kane. You know he's doing it early in the season, which he doesn't normally do. He normally has to wait to hit form. 
But um, yeah. Do you know what? The thing is, yeah, that's so funny because Paul Tierney was terrible today. And I don't even think he was for United in any way, what shape or form. He was pulling up shameless fouls against us all game. I'm not having that. The, the, the last person I'm going to blame for today's result is the ref, man. Oh, yeah, I, I agree with that. But, 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 I, I'm over here with you guys. Listen. I put that on purpose just to wind up Aaron a little bit. Um, <laughs> I think I think I'm probably more optimistic about Spurs than even Spurs fans themselves. I think Spurs, yeah. like if I were a fan of any top six side right now, I think Spurs fans should be the most excited. And the reason I say that is they've spent a whole lot of money. They've got a world class manager. They've kept their two best players. Kane did not leave. Son did not leave. You've invested on top of that. You've got Conte. I think Spurs are going to have their best season in a really long time in, in the Premier League. I, I really do believe that. And I think, look, in a hypothetical world in which neither Liverpool nor City win the league, I think Spurs are going to win the league if, if oh, both of them gosh, fall. Man. Listen, on, listen, man. listen, man. brother. What is this Bro, if you're trying to trigger me, it's working, isn't it? One it's touch, okay. I'm not triggering you. To trigger me. I have no horse That's what you brought me on the show to do, to try Listen and trigger to me. me. One touch, one touch. Listen to me. I have no horse in this race. I believe I'm guaranteed the top four spot. I believe City are guaranteed the top four spot. Now, all I'm saying is one thing. I'm just saying one thing and one thing only. I'm saying that if, if Liverpool and City fall off a cliff and they're horrendous, the club that I would say are going to win the league is Tottenham Hotspur. And I think Spurs are in a very good position. I think guaranteed top four for me. And I think they're going to win the FA Cup or the Carabao Cup this season. I really do. I really do think they are going to win a trophy and they're going to get Champions League football. And they're going to do well in, well in the Champions League. Now, this is not me saying this because, you know, there's what did like... You say? Any... What was that last bit? They're going to do well in the what? They're going to do well in the Champions League, a competition oh, that Conte neither of you does well are in the Champions League, right? So Conte does well in that usually, yeah. No, nah. I never said Conte does well in uh, that. But but you have but, you seen yeah, their group? Who does he manage? Who does he manage? Have you seen their group? Yeah, I've seen their group. I still don't. That's I literally a Europa League group. Do you realize that? I still see them joining man in the Europa League, bro. How about Frankfurt, that? Frankfurt, how about Frankfurt, that? Sporting Lisbon, and Marseille. And you're really yeah, telling right. me Spurs can't right. get through that. Marseille, 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 Marseille win that group, first of all. <laughs> My man said Marseille win that group. What, you're what, so... To be fair, we've got Eric Bailly to be fair, but he definitely will. Bailly, they got Tavares. You know what it is? Even, even, goals, even, goals, even if you didn't want to... Oh, Tavares. Oh, Tavares. Even if you didn't want Spurs winning the group. This is so crazy. One sec, one sec. Even if you didn't want Spurs winning the group, if you said Frankfurt winning the group, Nah. I'd be like, okay, you really just said Marseille are gonna win the Bruh, championship. Why not? Why not? Why not? Come why on, not? one touch, man. Have you been? Have you you can't have you put your bias to the side. You Sanchez, Gwen, Gwen Doozy, the, the Arsenal lads are gonna come for them boys. There, you get me. <laughs> you were Big winning up Marseille. You were winning. Guy. You were winning until you said Tavares. To be fair, and then you lost. Hey, it. Tavares has scored four goals in four games, bro. Don't sleep on him, bro. Hey, As you, a wing you back, you've not did. You hey, not did. hey. He's on loan, man. He's warming up, bro. But but who Sam is trying it because he said to me to, today on this very it. stream. On this Why do I want to try it, brother? Wait, Why? this is what you said to me in this stream. Let me just let me just remind you. Maybe you've forgotten and it slipped out by accident. First of all, you said Arsenal cannot get top four. Then you went on to say if any team I haven't said cannot, Liverpool, I said I don't predict them to. I, okay, say so whichever word you want to use is still the same outcome, right? <laughs> okay, you also said if there was a third team to win the league, if not. City and Liverpool, it will be Tottenham. Like, are you, so who would it be for you like, then, bro? It has to be us next, bro. It has to. Be. Oh my god! It has that's to be. So, that's bro, so like, deluded, man. But 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 I don't believe we can win the league, though. Do you get what I'm saying? But if you're yeah, saying, but I'm not saying Spurs are going to win the league either. I never said that. No, but in that circumstance where you just talked about, if City or Liverpool don't, we are winning the league, bro. I'm telling no, you. No, you're now, not. It's, Spurs are going to finish above you. How, bro? Based on what? You've never okay, seen it in I'm your lifetime. You've, you've never I'm, I'm seen you it in your on lifetime. What. Gen genuinely speaking, I'm, I'm telling you based seen on it in your lifetime. You know Please that, understand right? that I'm not a Spurs fan. I don't support Tottenham Hotspur. But I don't hate Arsenal or Spurs, or I don't like either. Why are you them. doing this to me, then? I'm not doing anything. This is the Spurs section. I'm just giving them their props. Listen to me. Tottenham Hotspur got a better manager. They got a better starting eleven. They got better depth. And... They got world-class players. That's something you do not have. So Kane can win you three games a season. 
Son can win you three games a season. I don't believe Arsenal have that yet. They can become world class, but they ain't world class now. So I think Spurs are in a better place. Am I crazy for saying that, Aaron? No, I think, I think you bang on, mate. I think, you know, they are in the Champions League. And, and, and you know, Arsenal are looking at it. The first time they played a decent team, they got beat. So that tells you exactly what you need to know about Arsenal, innit? So. I don't know why. Right, Spurs, but, you, but you know, it's just like throwing something. Arsenal but fans just simply think. cannot give Spurs credit at all. It's impossible. Right, I, no, no well, there's, there's giving them credit and saying they have a chance to win the league. That's two very different things. We I never said they have a chance to win the league. Do not change my word. Do not change my word. You created a, you worded a scenario that they have yes. a higher chance of winning it than us, and there's never yes, one hundred percent. If Liverpool and City fall off, Spurs are league champions. I stick by it. So I, have no, I have no problem saying that a hundred times if you want me to. I definitely don't like. Ah, right. it's, this unrealistic, my it's unrealistic. Look, speaking of winning the league, you get me. We have, we just have two final topics to talk on a little bit here. So first of all, Man City, Erling Haaland scores again. <laughs> See how yeah. I transitioned from potential league winners, Spurs, to likely league winners, uh, Manchester City. Um, so look, Manchester City drew against Aston Villa. Once again, proving that Steven Gerrard is, in fact, the best manager in the league. Um, <laughs> I don't know if you guys actually watched that game. I want to ask yeah. you guys, before we even even before we even speak about City, because we ain't going to speak about them for long. Let's be real, because no one gives a fuck about City. Let's be yeah, honest. Yeah, but like, true. 100%. <laughs> My thing is, are, are you guys worried that this Haaland brother is just going to break every single record known to mankind in this league? Or like, what exactly? Ivan Drago. He's just a machine, isn't he? That's all I can say. Ivan Drago. Like, I mean, I don't want him to, for obvious reasons. No one wants City to do well, do they? Not even uh, City fans at the heart of it. They, they like to suffer, and that's where they should stay, to, for me, being a United fan. But... I think I think he I, he's going to score a lot of goals in that team. De Bruyne, you know the players he's got around him. You know it's a it's a slip up, but I think that's a testament to to how unpredictable the Premier League is this season, and I love it for that. You know the teams that are favourites aren't guaranteed to win any game, and I think that's what we want as a competitive league. Everyone can beat everyone. You know I think a couple of, last couple of seasons with yourselves and City running away with the league. You know it's been it's been classed as a two horse race and. Not saying that's not the case in terms of um, where who might win the league this season or whatever, but the fact that I don't think anyone is scared of playing Manchester City or Liverpool or Arsenal or Tottenham or Chelsea or whoever is just it's and 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 I think that I don't see one touch shouting when you included Arsenal. Crazy, crazy. <laughs> I didn't, even, I, didn't, everyone. Didn't I, didn't, I didn't even mention United, obviously, for obvious reasons. So, um, and we just beat Arsenal. Uh, so and Liverpool. Uh, so I mean, Haaland will be will be absolutely. <laughs> uh, mate, look, I, I want to add two great. things in it. There's two things. First of all, Haaland, yeah, this ha- <laughs> he's a madman. He did crazy. He's like he, what he's on is just madness. Look, he's gonna score 18 tappings. Alone, and that's just tappets. Ten headers, and not because he's particularly good in the air. It's just because he's strong and he's a beast. Those ten headers, and then and then like eight, like where he just bullies someone to the left and the right, and then slots it home. So I don't know what he's going to end on this season because he's just absolute phenomenon. Like there's going to be games where City do nothing, and he pops up with a tapping, and they win the game. I and that's the, that's the first thing. The second thing is look. I don't know how Hussam's going to feel about what I'm going to say now, but this is what's going on in it. Pep is bored in the Premier League, bro. <laughs> City are still going to win this Premier League and comfortably. Let's be honest. They can go on a 10-game winning streak at any point they want to, innit? Let's be honest. There is going to be games like the Villa game. There is going to be games like the other game, they dropped, I think the Newcastle game. But when the going gets tough, Pep's going to be like, OK, all right, calm down, innit? Like, just bang these lot. Yeah, 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 two nils, three ones, like back to back to back. And we're not even going to know what hit us. So, yeah, um, Aaron's right in terms that nobody in the Premier League is scared of anybody. And that's because of the money that's available in this Premier League. Where you got Except when like you guys come to Anfield. Yeah, exactly. And I'll, I'll give myself that. I'm, I'm, I'm not going to. We've held L's upon L's upon L's. That's a six pointer for you. Lot. I, Arsenal, but, Arsenal win at Liverpool, by the way, this season. Aaron, what um, bet do you want to make? Right Arsenal, beat, Arsenal beat Liverpool. This what bet do you want to make? Non-monetary, right now. Non-monetary bet. 
Um, if I if Arsenal if Arsenal lose, if you beat Arsenal, I'll come in it and I will sing. You'll never walk alone. If Arsenal win, you have to sing. I'll sing 49-49 undefeated. No, no. Well, yeah. You sing that. All right, what, what do I get out of that though? Because I don't want to hear you sing an Arsenal song. I want, you, I want to hear you sing 20 times, 20 times Man United. Okay, no problem. Deal. Shake no. hand right now. It's for win or lose. Draw, no one gets anything. No, 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 no. Draw, no. No one gets to draw. Okay. No one gets to draw. I'm just, just, just a disclaimer. I'm not involved <laughs> in any part of that film. <laughs> I am not involved in any part of that I'm bet. So you, bro. Let it, be, let it be known on this channel, please. So clip me. So that just in case they thought I'm lying. I'm, I'm back in you, bro. It. Please, clip me. I'm back in I, I love the fact, you know, uh, he heard like Liverpool at Arby. He's like, nope, not involved. I, I love you, back in you, but I'm not <laughs> well, involved. I'm hey, not involved. Pal- in pal- 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 Palace went there and, and dominated. Yeah. So, you know. No, but the thing is, you need to understand it's a mental block. And, and oh, yeah, look, Aaron, to, to, to be serious, to be when I when I was growing up, we could never beat us. That's just the God yeah, honest yeah. No, no, but Aaron, we're not going to allow him to creep into this. No, we're not going to do this. We're talking about no. Man City, and yeah. then we're talking about something else. No, we're yeah. not letting. So you, do you know, it's just certain yeah. teams that are like that. Speaking of Man City, <laughs> Man City had a problem at Old Trafford. You know how they overcame that problem? They beat you six one over there. That's how you overcome these problems. You have to win. You know, over there, and then you know, keep keep building on it. But Arsenal just have a mental block against us. So, yeah. um, Haaland, what are we saying on on the Haaland situation? Is he just gonna absolutely like? Do, do you basically just to end on this? Do you expect him to break the goals record? Yeah, because because he's not got World Cup. He gets to he gets to rest for a couple mm. months. It's gonna help him. It's gonna help him. Big time. I think anything I think you guys want to say on Steven Gerrard getting a draw against uh, City? So yeah, so much just next, next Liverpool manager. Hopefully, that's what something, something just next slipped Liverpool into the mind. Too early, too early. Too early. Slip jokes are dead now. That's ten years ago. <laughs> never, anyway, never. <laughs> anyway, um, just the final topic before we lock things off. Um, and you know, this is us proving our versatility because we're not just a you know we're not just going to talk big six. We're going to put respect on everyone else, and because we're going to put respect on everyone else, we're going to talk about them negatively. So, Brighton beat Leicester. Leicester are in massive trouble. Wow. Brendan Rodgers, there has been murmurs, there has been talks. I'm sure when you guys have spoken to your friends, when you've spoken on spaces, when you've spoken on shows, a lot of people do have Brendan Rodgers as the first manager to get sacked this season. I don't know what you guys are saying on the whole Leicester slash Rodgers situation because I'm not his biggest fan, but I feel like he's been done dirty this summer. Mm -hmm. He's been let down, massively let down, you know, for a team. That have been have been doing quite well, quite well, and this really should have built on 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 last season. And he, he's not been backed at all. You know, I think is it one outfield player they signed? They've let Fafana go. Where does that money go now? You can't do anything until January. He's kind of had one ha- hand tied behind his back, and I, I get that they had a lot of injuries last season, and you're hoping them players that were injured can come back and and start to play. But you know, it, it's 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 hard for every manager out there. Not you know. We've we've seen with already with Scott Parker, you know whether that's his own fault or not. But you're walking a tightrope. Moyes is on the chopping block. Um, you know Klopp's on the chopping block a little bit. So <laughs> it's 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 tough for every manager. And I think Ro- Brendan Rodgers, I don't think he's got it in him to get out of it. And I do expect him to get the chop very very soon. I'm glad we're here. I'm glad you made it here, Hussam. This particular topic, I'm ready for this. Look. My people, my people, people talked about Brendan Rodgers should have been the Arsenal manager instead of Arteta. People were calling Brendan this, Brendan that, bro. He's part of the fake managers club. And what I talk about, let me, let me explain the fake managers club. They're known for playing really, really nice, nice football, but doesn't really amount to a lot. Like Roberto Martinez. He's wasted the whole Belgium golden generation because he's toilet. Uh, what's it called? This Mark, this Fulham manager. Um, what's his name again? Uh, Marco did, Silva. Marco yeah. Silva. Yes, great. He, he did a great job getting them from the Championship up to the Premier League. But eventually, this guy's nonsense is going to show itself. If not for Mitrovic, he loses Mitrovic. He's lost in it. But Brendan, what I'm saying about Brendan, he got backed heavily last season. Yeah, heavily, and he and he didn't capitalize. He had a few injuries, so the board basically said, "Look, when you get your man fit." then you should be able to do better than you did last season with this crop of players. Let's be honest. 
and Brendan is still living in Vardy land. I mean, Omar, Vardy died two seasons ago. He's not supposed to be a starter right now. He has two players that are better than Vardy right now. Paxton Dakar and Ihenacho. They should be they should be forming a partnership. They need to move past the 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 old guy, the the club legend Jamie Vardy. He should be coming on 15 minutes trying to save something. He he shouldn't be asked to run for 70 minutes. Jamie Vardy. Ah, is he a machine? Come on, like it's it's, 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 it's madness, bro. So he deserves everything he's getting right now. I do believe he's maybe not been back this summer, but with the squad he has, bro, like come on. Are you telling me if, uh, what's his name, that guy that used to manage Burnley, managed this crop of players, he wouldn't have them in the top half of the Premier League? Sean right? Dyche. Sean Dyche. Are you mad, bro? Shawnee will have them on Smash, mate. So, oh, Shawnee. Is that what you're doing now? <laughs> man like Shawnee, yeah, bro. So, Brendan's <laughs> got to take Dyche. a walk, man. I, walk to I, I think, look, I'm not Rogers' biggest fan at all. And if he does get sacked, it's not like I'm going to cry myself to sleep or anything. But all I'm saying is, look, I, th- I just think this summer specifically, he has been done a little bit dirty. That's that's all I'm saying. You know, this summer, you know, not real, not real, any real spend over there, you know, uh, losing your best players and stuff. So, you know, it's just best like... Players. With, with... Which best players? Which ones? I think, so you're giving it, first so of all, they lost for Fana. Just Fofana. lost for Fana. They just lost him. Yeah. Okay. It's Second of all, Thielemans don't want to be there to begin with. But look, I hear you, but look at the team they played. Are Mentally, you, me, you don't want to be are you, there. Are you telling me the teams they played, they don't have enough quality to take more points? Than they One have? touch. You're an Arsenal fan. I'm a Liverpool fan. We both were linked to him. You know for a fact Tiedemans don't want to be there. And you know when a player don't want to be there, he don't play up to, to, to the level required. You know that. Yeah, I, I, Come on. I that. So, like, I, I, I feel like they haven't spent the necessary money to, to sort of address what they need to, to address. But, look, Rogers, I agree with Aaron as well. I don't think he has the minerals to sort of get out of, of, of this situation. Nah, um, so anyway, cool. guys, this is how you guys know this is the end of the show because you guys can see the names on the screen. See the professionalism, Harry. You were here all day long discussing it and you could just see us and then suddenly, <laughs> boom, the name appeared so you can know where to follow us. Um, anyway, guys, we have reached the end of the show. Everyone watching us right now, please don't forget to slap up that like button. Subscribe to the channel if you are yet to do so. By the way, these are my socials on literally every platform. So you can follow me wherever you want on, on, on Don Hussam 6. And of course, the name of my channel is here. Um, make sure you like and subscribe. So now we're going to go to all the, our lovely panelists. And they're going to let you know where you can find them. So as the winner of today and the winner of who wound up the other two the most, man like Aaron... Where can the people find you, my guy? Yeah, so I, my name is Aaron, but I do go by double A, so it's maybe double A on the socials. Obviously, I'm one third of Talking Kit. If you're into your football shirts and football kits, we run the best YouTube channel re- regarding football shirts. Let me tell you, it is the greatest content on YouTube for that. So, yeah, Talking Kit. I'm also a Manchester Red fan on Never a Foul with the boy Daps and Cass and Ty. And all them goods and Mo as well, obviously, and Trafford Tunnel as well. So they're the, they're the places you'll find me most. Um, talking serious football and also the fun side in uh, football shirts, as you can see, right behind me. And oh, but okay. first, first and foremost, thank you, uh, Hassan, for having me back on. It's always a pleasure to come and talk football with you. Hopefully, it's uh, one of many more appearances on the channel. I love, I love watching it and I love being a part of it. So thank you very much. Big up all the community as well. You're always welcome. You're always welcome on the channel. One Touch, my brother. Where can the people find you? Uh, you can catch me on One Touch TV on all the socials, YouTube as well. You can also catch me on Tunnel TV, same socials on YouTube and Instagram as well. And big up everyone that's that's been in the comment section. Big up the panel. Big up Hussam for inviting me on again. I've told him once now, tell him again. I never hide, win, lose or draw. <laughs> Arsenal till I die. We move. Big up, big up, man. And look, as always, the departing message from This Is Football is everyone who comes on this channel is family. So please do go, make sure you go follow them on all social media platforms. Listen to their podcast. Subscribe to their channels. Show them the love and support that you show me. So big up, you guys. Like, subscribe. The schedule is as follows. Inshallah, tomorrow we're going to be back over here for a Liverpool show. As you guys noticed, we didn't talk about them today. I'm going to get a whole bunch of Liverpool yeah, fans. We're going to do an, our nice little therapy uh, session probably late night, you know, when all the kids are asleep. So we can swear oh, as yeah, much as we want you get me without anyone noticing not like this is on youtube so anyway guys i'll see you guys tomorrow i thank you guys so much